Uh, so I'm 12 years old and I'm entering grade seven. And at this point, I'm really boy crazy. Now, I had attended another school, a public primary school from kindergarten to grade six. And then for grade seven and eight junior high, I would be attending Stanley Park Senior Public School in Kitchener, Ontario, before transitioning to our third school for high school. And the most exciting thing about going to junior high, besides all of my girlfriends coming with me, is that there would be a brand new selection of boys. We were tired of all the boys we had gone to school with from kindergarten to grade six. So there's going to be new boys in grade seven and also grade eight boys. Now, the first few weeks of junior high, my girlfriends and I anxiously and nervously, we shared our lists of who our new crushes were. And there was many cute boys, but one boy stood out for me. I was totally smitten with Jordan Simmons. Jordan Simmons was in grade eight and Jordan Simmons was known as a skater boy. He literally rode his skateboard to and from school. He had blonde, shiny hair that was shaved at the side with a flip hanging over his brow. And his signature outfit was a white t-shirt with denim overalls with one strap hanging down and high top converse. He had the boyish good looks of a young DiCaprio. Now I gazed and followed Jordan Simmons around the halls in between classes. And I don't really know if Jordan knew I existed, but when the poster went up for the fall fling, I was excited. The fall fling was going to be the first after school dance, literally lasting about 50 minutes. But my mission at the fall fling was that I was going to dance with Jordan Simmons. Now, up until this point, I hadn't really attended any kind of school dance or a social dance other than maybe the odd family wedding. And on the day of the fall fling, the after school bell rang and all of us girls ran to our locker, opened up that door and looked into that magnetic mirror locker that was on the door. I poofed up my hair, I reapplied my lip smackers, lip gloss, I added that bright blue eyeliner, I spritzed on some perfume I had stolen from my mother and I popped in a stick of Wrigley Spearmint gum. As I walked into that gymnasium with all of my friends, it was everything you imagined from a grade seven, eight dance. It was the most awkward situation. The girls were all on one end, the boys were all on the other, the lighting was terrible. And our science teacher, Mr. Clark, was the DJ. As song after song started to play, no one was even dancing. Everyone just stood at the wall doing the awkward step together step or giggling or laughing or whispering. After a few songs, I was getting anxious. I mean, I actually wanted to dance. It was the one thing I knew that I already loved. And finally getting tired of it, I grabbed some of my friends and made our way into the middle of the gymnasium. And once I did that, people followed suit. Now we're dancing to the fast songs and having a great time in 1991. And as soon as the first slow song came on, everyone ran back to the wall and stood there. Upon the second slow song, a few couples made their way to the middle of the gymnasium while everyone else whispered and giggled. And finally, after 45 minutes, when I knew this dance was over, I knew I had to dance with Jordan Simmons. And if he wasn't going to ask me, I was going to ask him. By that last slow song, I don't know where my confidence came from, but I did ask Jordan Simmons to dance, and he agreed. He had his hands on my waist, and I had my hands on his shoulders, feeling just that one overall strap. And there was so much space in between us. You could fit several subway cars, but it didn't matter. In that moment, I pictured that this is what it would be like to dance at our first dance at our wedding. I was madly in love and as gorgeous as Jordan was, he didn't have much to say. When the slow dance was over and Smells Like Teen Spirit came on by Nirvana to close off the school dance, I was so grateful that I had secretly memorized every lyric to that song. Jordan Simmons by now was a massive Kurt Cobain fan, and as I bobbed my head awkwardly in our improvised mosh pit, I thought I could impress Jordan. That still didn't impress him. Now, I never ended up dating Jordan Simmons, even though he was my massive first crush, but ironically, 14 years later, I would run into Jordan again. 
I was already living in Toronto, but I was returning to Kitchener for the one thing that I returned to Kitchener for, Kitchener Oktoberfest. I'm doing the awkward polka dance on the dance floor. My beer is sloshing all over the place. I'm laughing with the new set of girlfriends as the accordion is going and Jordan Simmons crosses by. He notices me and we strike up a conversation. We even have a polka. I actually went out with Jordan a couple times after that, but realized Jordan wasn't for me. He kept his good looks, but he didn't have much to say. And I was ready to move on. But what that fall fling taught me is my love and passion for dance. As I went through high school, I loved the school dances, the fall fling, the spring fling, the winter semi-formal, and eventually prom. And I was always okay with getting that dance floor started, even if nobody else wanted to. And as I grew older and started attending weddings and more social events, all the time, my girlfriends would say, I just need one more cocktail before I can feel confident going on the dance floor. I would just go. I could be the most sober woman in the room and look like the drunkest woman on the dance floor, but I loved to dance. As I started dating more seriously in my late 20s and 30s, possibly looking for a more serious partner, one of my criteria was to find a man who was a great dancer. All my girlfriends were looking for men with stable careers or potentially wanting to be a father. I wanted a good dancer. And I dated several men who I would go to events with or weddings and they would just stand in the corner. They were awkward. And I thought, mm, not for me. In 2011, I met my husband to be. I didn't know right away he was going to be my husband, but I knew pretty early on. On our third date, my husband to be, David, gave me a CD as a gift. It was a CD by the band called The National and the album was Boxer. David handed me the CD and told me to go home and listen to it. And I listened to it over and over again until about 5 a.m. Oddly enough, The National has now become my favorite band. And my husband, David, and I have gone on to see them several times live in concert. In 2014, when we were planning our wedding, there were so many things that we had to plan and figure out. We had relatives com from coming, coming from all over the world. But the one thing we knew when they asked us, what would be your first dance? Without hesitation, we knew it would be the song Slow Show by The National. The lyrics, I knew I dreamed about you for 29 years before I met you, were lyrics that stood out because David had met me when he was 29. In the early beginnings when David and I were dancing, when David and I were dating and I took him out dancing one night, I was blown away of what a great dancer he was. He had style, great rhythm, timing, and he knew more about music than anyone I ever knew. Our first dance was not awkward. David and I were squished together. There was no space between us at all. We gazed into each other's eyes. And as soon as the first dance was over and the band played, we danced the rest of the night. We love to dance. I don't know whatever happened to Jordan Simmons. And I still laugh that I know every single lyric to Smells Like Teen Spirit by Nirvana. And during this pandemic, through all the ups and downs and the challenges and the fact that we miss live events and miss dancing, I'm so grateful that I have a partner that will have kitchen dance parties with me, random nights of the week. And sometimes when I'm just standing in the kitchen will come up behind me and twirl me around for a slow dance. Thank you.